Hi, thanks for joining me as you journey through learning chemistry. In this video, this is a, a very basic introduction. I'm going to go through some of it quickly with the assumption that it is prior knowledge from middle school. All right, so let's get some definitions down, make sure we're on the same page. The proton is the positively charged particle found in the nucleus, much heavier than an electron. The electron is the negatively charged particle, and it's found somewhere outside the nucleus. We don't know where. We talk about the probability of finding an electron with a given energy, and it weighs about 1 18 37th of a proton. And so we call it negligible. So if we took the mass of a proton plus an electron, it's going to be approximately equal to the mass of a proton. And just because within significant figures, that electron addition is so small. Okay, there is another particle that is neutral, and that's called the neutron. And it's approximately the same mass as a proton, but it has no charge associated with it, zero charge. Okay, now atoms, when we talk about an atom, we're talking about a neutral particle. Um, they contain my number of electrons is equal to my number of protons. So if you take your protons plus your electrons, that's going to equal the charge. And if it's called an atom, then protons are equal to electrons. And whoops, should be protons minus electrons. Sorry about that. Protons, the number of protons, number of protons minus your number of electrons is equal to your charge. And if those two are equal to one another, your charge is zero. Okay, now there is a number on the periodic table that tells you your number of protons, and that's called the atomic number. It's going to be the smaller of the two. And if you change atomic number, you change elements. So the uh, atomic number defines the element. Uh, if you change that atomic number, we're talking about nuclear chemistry or nuclear reactions as opposed to chemical reactions. Kaboom. Okay, now there's another one and I want you to note the difference between these two as I talk about them. And we're going to talk about two types of masses. We're going to be talking about atomic number, or excuse me, atomic mass and mass number. A mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So that's happy, helpful to know. Remember, number of protons minus number of electrons is equal to the charge and the number of protons plus neutrons, neutrons plus protons, is the mass number. Now, the mass number does not show up on the periodic table. Um, we have things called isotopes that have a different number of neutrons. So if I change, if we change the number of neutrons, that's going to change the mass number. The atomic number on the, appear, on, excuse me, I keep messing those up, I apologize. The atomic mass is the weighted average. Just like your grade is a weighted average, typically of things such as quizzes and homework and labs and tests, they don't all impact your grade as much. And that's what we're going to do when we talk about a weighted average. More on that in a later video. Um, but the point is that it is the atomic mass that is on the periodic table, not the mass number. The mass number um, is specified in a variety of ways. We have to specify it. You do not have to specify atomic number because the atomic number of carbon is always six. So if I write the word carbon, I know that my number of protons is six. It's common to put a hyphen and a 14, um, and that tells you the mass number, and then by subtraction, 
you can find out that your number of neutrons has to be equal to 8. Okay, so those are little math formulas uh, that are going to come in um, quite handy okay, as we start this next segment. We'll apply what we just learned to trying to determine what isotope we are talking about. And in the context, I'm going to define something called a nuclear or often called a chemical symbol or symbol or configuration. So nuclear symbol, chemical configuration. Uh, it's had a couple of terms that I have seen. All right, so the first box asks me what my mass number is. Now remember, my mass number is equal to my number of protons plus my number of neutrons. And I know both of those in this column, 5 plus 6 is 11. My atomic number is equivalent to my number of protons. So that's going to be a 5. My charge is protons minus electrons is equal to charge. So the charge in this case is 5 minus 5, or it's a neutral atom. And to indicate that, what we're going to do is we're going to put the mass number in the upper left. We're going to put the atomic number in the lower left. The atomic number tells us what element it is. So we're going to go to the periodic table, and you'll find that element 5 is boron. So that's one of the ways I could talk about that. Another way I could reference this, uh, if it's neutral, is boron hyphen 11. You can indicate the mass number that way. All right, in my next example, I know electrons, neutrons, and mass number. I need to find my protons. Well, to find my protons, I'm going to take my mass number, which is 14, so I have 14 minus my neutrons, which is 8, and I'm going to get 6. So I have 6 protons, which means my atomic number is 6. All right, my charge is protons minus electrons. 6 minus 6 is 0. Now to do my nuclear symbol, I put my mass number in the upper left, that's 14, my atomic number in the lower left, that's 6. Look up at my periodic table, my element 6 is carbon. Okay, so hopefully you're tracking how we're doing this here. This next one's a little tricky. I have mass number, but I don't know protons or electrons. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to use the fact, it's kind of a little bit of a logic puzzle, I suppose. So I do know my charge is negative 2. And I know that my protons minus my electrons, which are 18, is my charge. So what number minus 18 is minus 2? Well, 16 minus 18 is a negative 2. So now that I know my protons, I can get my neutrons because mass number minus those protons will give me 16 neutrons. My atomic number is identical to my number of protons, so that's 16. So we put the mass number in the upper left, the atomic number in the lower left, look on the periodic table, and you'll see that sulfur, and now watch what I do with this charge. You put the number and the sign in the upper right hand corner. Okay, We save that lower right hand for bonding, so we won't use that till we get to bonding. Um, technically it's too negative. Now honestly if one of my students had done this I wouldn't take points off, but the technical way to do that is S2 negative. I think I got corrected on that by Todd Abramowitz, a very uh, good educator out in the Dallas area, at least he used to be. Okay, let's take a look at this final one. I've got 10 and 14 and a plus 3. So let's 
have to do a similar thing that we had before. If we know electrons and charge, we can get to our protons. So protons minus 10 is equal to our charge of plus 3. So our protons must be 13 in this case. My mass number is protons plus or neutrons, excuse me, protons plus neutrons, 27. Atomic number is identical to my protons. So to do this, I'm going to put a 27 in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to put a 13 mass number on top, atomic number on bottom. That's aluminum, and it's got a 3 plus charge associated with it. Okay, hope I was help you helped you show ways we communicate our understanding using a nuclear symbol, chemical configuration as a model for a particular isotope or ion. Thanks for joining me.